Well, it seems that Hollywood is finally getting it right when it comes to video game adaptations. I mean, Sonic the Hedgehog was a runaway hit, the last biggest movie before the Rona invasion happened. Uh, Mortal Kombat, which is coming out April 16th, the trailer alone got people hyped up. The new Resident Evil, not only just a, not only just a movie, but a series as well. I mean, the new poster for the for the for the new movie got all the names like Chris Redfield, Leon S. Kennedy, Claire Redfield, all that. That that poster speaks volumes. That poster screams, "Alice don't live here no more." Because let's be real, the Paul W. S. Anderson Resident Evil movies were trash. Yeah, I said that. But. To Hollywood execs, directors, executive producers, etc., etc., it was all about the almighty dollar. And they didn't really care about the, the source material, let's be real. They just wanted to do whatever it took to make a dollar because they knew people were going to see anything with the name of a video game slapped on it. Dating all the way back to the early 90s, Double Dragon, let's be real, was one of the worst video games. No, no, take that back outside of anything Huey Bowl directed was the worst video game adaptation of all time. The only good things that come out of that was, you know, Alyssa Milano came out unscathed and the dude that played Jimmy Lee is now on Iron Chef America. Yeah! That's pretty, that's a, that's a pretty good gig. And then you have the Street Fighter movie. Raul Julia's last hurrah. And let me tell you something. He went out with a bang as M. Bison. Of course! Man, Raul Julia was just another actor the world wasn't ready for. But you know, I one time considered the Street Fighter movie, Jean-Claude Van Damme playing an American soldier. A god-awful movie. But after watching Street Fighter Legend of Chun Li, I actually went back and watched the Van Damme Raul Julia Street Fighter movie and I actually I was entertained by it. Street Fighter The Legend of Chun Li was so bad it made me go back and watch the old Street Fighter movie and like it. Crazy. Now what's funny is you would think a lot of video games based on movies, you know, like Super Mario Brothers would get a video game adaption based on the movie. I mean, that would be hilarious playing as a digitized Bob Hoskins as Mario in a Super Mario Brothers the movie the game. Probably for the Super NES. Honestly, I would have I would have bought a SNES for that a lot sooner before Donkey Kong Country. But long but, but to the point, I want to talk about two bad yeah I still think the Street Fighter movie is bad. Two bad video game adaptation films with good video game adaptations. I'm talking about Street Fighter the movie before you click away. I'm talking about the arcade version, not the shit PS1 and Saturn version that tried to be too much like Super Turbo. And Double Dragon Neo Geo, which despite being based on the movie, was very anime. Let's discuss. So, the Street Fighter movie was released in 1994. Street Fighter the movie The Game was released in 1995. In June, to be exact. Around my 11th birthday. Isn't that awesome? I remember going to the Fun and Games arcade. It was maybe my first or second time at the Florida Mall because we had just been living in Florida just shy of a couple months. I remember, well, yeah, it was about ah, September of 95 was the first time I played it at, the, at Fun and Games in the Florida Mall. And I remember I had no prior knowledge of this game existing until I saw it in the arcade and it blew my mind that I saw digitized versions of Jean-Claude Van Damme and Kylie Minogue and uh, Raul Julia's stunt double doing the Street Fighter moves. It was crazy. And the, Action was fast and furious and frantic. 
just like your average normal everyday digitized fighting game based on a movie that just happens to be based on a game. You have backgrounds that are inspired by the movie, well hell, they're taken straight from the movie, and you also have scenes playing from the movie, you know, in backgrounds such as like screens and other things, you know, other ways they can take scenes from the movie and put them in the game just in case you forget that this game that you're playing on that was based on the game was based on a movie that was based on a game. While I do claim that this game is fast and frantic and fun, of course it does have its problems. That being the controls, at time, they aren't as responsive as you would like. So you have to make sure the inputs are slow and steady. Yeah, I know that sounds weird. Inputs are slow and steady in a game that's fast and frantic. But believe it or not, it does work that way. That isn't necessarily a good thing. Because most players concentrate more on doing the move than they do fighting the battle. And that can cost you in the end. Street Fighter the movie the game was eventually adapted into two terrible home console ports both on the, Se on the Sega Saturn and on the PlayStation. Both games were very lazily done. There were a couple of characters who appeared in this game who didn't appear in the arcade version. Uh, it tried way too hard to be street Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. So we ignore that one and we talk about the arcade version and the sad thing is about it The arcade version gets a bad rep because of the home console ports Nobody wants to bring up the arcade version because the home console ports turn most people off of the arcade version Despite the fact that you know people in the 90s when arcades were still thriving Would run into Street Fighter the movie and just bypass it because they played it on the home consoles first and thought it was the same exact game it's a completely different game, and it's a better game. So I suggest you get, you get yourself a MAME emulator and check out Street Fighter the movie. And avoid buying it on the home console. Before we do that, I just want to... Let's just play that intro. I just love this intro for whatever reason. It just gets me hyped up. Let's play it. Go ahead. Take a look at it. See what I mean? You start off, you get scenes from the movie, digitized scenes from the movie right out the gate. You think you're gonna get something similar to Street Fighter the movie when it comes to like graphics and stuff. Nope, it's not digitized. It's straight anime. And the crazy thing is, this game plays very similar except the speed is slower and instead of six buttons you got four. It plays just like a Street Fighter game. It's probably one of the better uh, fighting games for the Neo Geo. Yeah, I said that. It's one of the better... Yeah, because there are some pretty shit fighting games for Neo Geo. But I put this one up there. Now, unfortunately, the game did get mixed to negative reviews. That's mainly because they suck at it. I highly recommend Double Dragon, Neo... Double Dragon for the Neo Geo. I highly recommend it. I think it's great. It takes what the movie did and corrects it. Funny thing about this game is that five of the 12 characters actually appear in the movie. Some of these characters appeared in other games such as Burn Off and Duke were in Double Dragon 2, while five of these characters were created just for this game. But at least you have Duke Shuko as your final boss. I try not to talk about the movie because it's just so bad. I remember going to see the movie when I was a kid. Me and my dad went to see it and we walked out of it. Me and my dad walked out of Double Dragon. That's crazy. He paid, we went to see it, and we walked the fuck out. 
Yeah. But the game was great. I, I absolutely love it. So, that's just me spewing on about two games based that were turned into movies and had video game adaptations based on those movies that I feel are good. Now, if there are any other video game adaptations based on movies that were adapted from video games, you can leave it in the comments section below. Because I'm pretty sure I'm missing some. If not, these are the only two worth mentioning. Alright, that's going to do it for now. Once again, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Support us on Patreon. We are now on Patreon. The link is below. And once again, thanks for tuning in. And remember, the word can't does not exist. Brown out.